How's it going, guys? We have a challenging question in pulmonary hematology. 30 year old man evaluated in hospital. Father has history of cirrhosis. Arterial bloods are shown. pH 7.39 normal should be 7.35 to 4.5. Bicarb normal 24 should be 22 to 28. O2 content is low. PO2 is 90 millimeters of mercury. That's normal, should be 80 to 100. PCO2 is normal at 38, should be 33 to 44. I understand that you don't have the lab values in front of you. Some of you didn't know the normal ranges. You have to take your training wheels off. And this is about saving time on the USMLE and not wasting your time looking up kindergarten level lab values. All right? Which is the final cycle explanation for patient's findings? Choice A alpha 1 antitrypsin efficiency is wrong. That's also, they can write it as deficiency of antiprotease. So that's a protein produced in the liver, alpha 1 antitrypsin. It usually breaks down neutrophilic elastase. And elastase is an enzyme in the liver and also in the lungs. So if you have deficiency of alpha 1 antitrypsin, you get a buildup of elastase, and you can break down the parenchyma of the liver, get cirrhosis, break, break down the parenchyma in the lungs, you get pan acinar emphysema. I'll tell you the data cirrhosis here, but if we wanted to conjecture that we, let's say, had pan acinar emphysema leading to some abnormality with the bloods here, wouldn't make sense because the classic derangement for COPD is chronic respiratory acidosis, where you have a low pH and you have a high bicarbonate that's compensatory for a high CO2, okay? And your PO2 would be low and it's normal here. So it just, none of that makes sense. And the other thing is if choice A were correct, choice E would also have to be correct. Therefore, choice A, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, anemia, correct answer. Now, actually, one a final point about choice A is it's co-dominant. And they want you to know the double Z allele is the worst combo, by the way. As I already said, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, anemia, correct answer. Now, this is the deal. O2 content, if I were to ask you what that is equal to in the blood, you'd say, no idea. Okay. Now, our next step is think about how O2 is carried in the blood. It's carried as dissolved oxygen. It's about 2% of it. That's your PO2. And then most of it, 98%, is carried on hemoglobin as HBO2. So our O2 content is equals our PO2 plus our HBO2. So far, so good? Or are people getting emotional right now? So that's already too difficult. Not hard, right? Fine. So our next step in discussion is how would it be possible that we have a patient who has a normal PO2, normal dissolved oxygen, but somehow has a decreased O2 content overall. The only way that's possible is if HbO2 is low, right? So anemia is one possible explanation for that where the other answers don't make sense. Anemia, carbon monoxide poisoning, methemoglobinemia, these are possible explanations for how you can have a low O2 content despite a normal PO2. So anemia, you'd have normal saturation of the hemoglobin for oxygen, and your dissolved oxygen, your PO2 is normal. Very, very high yield physiology for your simile, okay? Normal saturation of hemoglobin, your dissolved oxygen is normal, but anemia is defined as simply low hemoglobin. So you have low oxygen state overall, O2 content of the blood is reduced. You understand? So let's just knock out the other ones. Polystomy of error is wrong. It's a JAK2 mutation. That's hyperproliferation of hematopoietic stem cells, and that's going to lead to high hemoglobin. And also, one of your, at least one of your other two cell lines, white blood cells or platelets, will also be high. So they can, all three of them can be high. Two of the three can be high. And they'll give you findings like pruritus after a shower. And if we look at this situation here, O2 content in the blood would be normal, not reduced. So that just doesn't make sense. So what you got to know for Pysmivera is that if they give you a pulse oximetry, which is showing you your hemoglobin saturation, it can be around 93, 94%. It should be up at 98, 99%. Now you say, well, that's low. Yeah, but not really. It's normal for polysomyvera. I'm telling you this because you can get a polysomyvera question. They tell you pulse oximetry, 93%. Don't read into it as though there's a lung problem. There's not. It's simply harder to saturate more hemoglobin 
when you have it in excess amounts, right? So wrong fucking answer. Choice D solicit poisoning nonsense answer choice, wrong fucking answer. So you would have a mixed metabolic acidosis or spiritual alkalosis. Some of you are astute. Yes, in the first 20 minutes you get isolated or spiritual alkalosis. But regardless, in this case, we've got a normal pH, we have a normal bicarb, we have a normal CO2. You never see that with salicylates and USMLA. So you need to know that the first 20 minutes, isolated respiratory alkalosis due to aspirin causing tachypnea upregulates respiratory centers in the brain. And then the uh, salicylate is an acid itself. It's going to lead to a metabolic acidosis, a mixed state. But in 100% of aspirin questions, they're going to test the mixed, not the isolated pathology. So you'd have a decreased bicarb always, decreased CO2 always. pH can be normal or low. Okay, and it's a high anion gap metabolic acidosis because it's the S in mud piles, which is our mnemonic for that. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice E, ventilation perfusion mismatch is wrong. Now, even if that confuses you, you say, oh, the VQ stuff, I don't get it. Okay, well, here's the deal. If choice E were correct, it would mean the lungs are fucked up in some way, right? Well, we know that's wrong because PO2 is normal. That's the easiest one to eliminate, choice C. Okay, because PO2 is normal. Same with choice A, basically. You could have choice E be correct with choice A being wrong, but you can't have choice A being correct with choice E being wrong. But regardless, our PO2 is normal here. So if we were testing some sort of lung pathology, if we had, let's say, a shunt where VQ is low, it could be anything like asthma, it could be fibrosis, COPD, if VQ is high, that's dead space, that's pulmonary embolism. You have reduced PO2, so it wouldn't be normal here. So that's how you can eliminate uh, ventilation perfusion mismatch in this question. Wrong fucking answer. 